Researchers believe climate change is causing major turbulence in the skies, and that could lead to more flight delays and cancellations in the future. The FAA already blames bad weather for most flight disruptions. So to help address these travel headaches, the airline industry is turning to AI to help navigate smoother and safer experiences. Amy McGovern is with us now. She is the director of the National Science Foundation's Institute for Research on Trustworthy AI in Weather, Climate, and Coastal Oceanography at the University of, of Oklahoma. <laughs> That's a mouthful. And she is also a professor for the School of Computer Science and the School of Meteorology. Uh, Fascinating. So, um, before we, so what is your team working on, the software that your team is working on, that will help alleviate some of the things that I just mentioned in the introduction? So, we're working on developing trustworthy AI for a wide, a wide variety of applications of high-impact weather. So, it includes the turbulence that you're talking about. But we're also looking at other high-impact weather phenomena, including hail and tornadoes and tropical cyclones or hurricanes and winter weather. And the trustworthy AI that we're developing, what we mean by that is that we're developing AI that our end users, which are primarily professional end users, um, will actually trust and use in times of crisis. So are we talking about the kind of AI that could predict <clears throat> a pocket of turbulence before a plane hits it, say, so that you know the pilot could say, buckle up now uh, because it's gonna get rough, I don't know, 30 seconds from now. Mm -hmm. It would be better if you could predict it even farther in advance so mm. that you could go around it. So the, the answer to that is yes. A lot of the turbulence accidents lately have been from something we call convective initiation. It's the start of a thunderstorm. And we can predict that convective initiation, that thunderstorm starting. We're trying to get there but it's about 30 minutes in advance mm. so that you know, okay, we need to route our planes around this area because it's much more likely to have a thunderstorm developing in the next few minutes or the next 30 minutes. And then you, you don't even need to worry about the buckle up. You're just going around it. Right. So uh, how is this different than any kind of radar satellite that pilots already use in the plane? I mean, yeah. I've been in aircraft where you can see, they can look, I know that there's the clear air turbulence that sometimes is not able to be captured on radar, but I've been in, in cockpits where I can actually see either bad weather um, or, or areas that pilots want to avoid. So they have real-time radar information, but that's just really right inside, in front of them. And, um, and, and as I said, we're doing this for a wide variety of applications, not just aviation, but, but when you're trying to predict convective initiation, you're trying to look sort of over the whole United States, over the whole world eventually, where the thunderstorms are gonna develop over the next 30 to 60 minutes, um, or zero to 30 minutes, but really the goal is to get about 30 to 60 minutes out. So that information will be available. What the pilots are seeing in their cockpit is really real time, right, right in front of them, right? This will be available more at a, at a, in advance, they could be able to be rerouted. Air traffic control could be looking at it and say, we need to reroute this, you know how the planes all fly in lanes, right? Yeah. We need to reroute this whole section to go around this area because it's about to have a whole bunch of thunderstorms. I think that's interesting because when we look at, you know, uh, the radar, where we're just usually for us, if we're just checking the weather, we sort of predict, sorry, where a storm is going based on the movement of this sort of wobbly mass that we're looking mm -hmm. at, right? Um, <laughs> yes. But every once but in a while- you want to be able to say it before it starts. Right, right. right. Because just... Sometimes, you know, the meteorologists working in local news would say something like, and then we had this pop-up storm, and I always interpreted pop-up storm as like, oh, like, you mean you didn't tell us that the storm was coming, right? right? So now it's a pop-up, it's a new weather phenomenon. <laughs> but and you're talking about being able to see the elements that will give birth to a storm before it happens. So there's no pop-ups, there's no surprises. Exactly, and, and we're in addition to the turbulence, you know, we care about a lot of other hazards. So we're talking about hail and tornadoes. Mm. You know, if, if you imagine, if we're still talking about the airline industry, imagine how much damage the hail does to the airline industry, right? If you could give them an hour's notice that there's about to be a severe hailstorm coming through the airport, they could just stop all the landings and get all the planes that are there out. Mm -hmm. right? so, so all of these severe weather hazards, you'd like to be able to do them while there's still nothing on the radar. I want to ask you this umbrella question, because Vlad and I were joking at the top of the hour about it feels like every other day we're doing an AI story, and it's either AI is ruining our lives, oh my God, or AI is the best thing ever, it's going to improve our lives exponentially. Right. You know, how are, we, how are we to approach AI when we hear it? And I, sometimes I feel like people are just slapping AI on everything because it's like a sexy thing right now. But how, how, what's your approach to artificial intelligence? 
That's an excellent question. It currently is the sexy new thing. I agree. <laughs> I've been working on AI for over 20 years. So it's I've been working on it for a very long time. It's not the new thing, right? Uh, so bring sexy back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Um, you know, AI has had a couple of sort of ups and downs over the last 40 years. Um, I haven't been working on it that long. <laughs> but but my answer is what we're doing is we're actually working with our end users. So that's what we're doing in our Trustworthy AI Institute. Mm -hmm. We're making sure that the AI we develop is actually what our end users need. So we're working with social scientists and our social scientists are, are interviewing our end users and saying, does this actually give you what you need? And would you trust it? What, what don't you trust about it? And we go back and fix it. So we're not just developing, you know, sexy new AI that we're tossing over a fence and saying, here, this fixes your problems. We're really working with our end users and making sure it meets their needs and making sure that it's going to be trusted. And that I think will help alleviate a lot of the issues that are happening with the, the AI that is being developed without really looking at that, just because for the sake of it being the cool thing. Amy McGovern, that is fascinating. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.